there. I am so excited that you're here for Swapped. And whether you're listening via the podcast or watching by video, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. And I'm super excited to welcome my guest, Courtney Brown. And Courtney and I have been friends for quite a while. Yeah. We've known each other for quite a while. And I was just trying to say, I was just trying to figure out when we met. But I think that actually our parents knew each other even before we did. Yeah, for about, our parents have known one another. About a decade ago. Home. Yeah, yeah, about 10 years. Yeah. Um, Courtney's mom was serving in Fiji mm -hmm. for a mission for the same church as my parents also serving there. And I think my parents got home in um, 2010. Same. I think my mom was home in October of 10. Yeah. So it's and been That just goes by fast, too. Yeah. And so I, I think we decided that we met at SNAP. I think we met at SAMP officially. We were both kind of Run speaking and mm -hmm. doing little things. Gosh, I can't believe that. Run, ran in very similar circles, knew, had a lot of the same friends, but finally met at SNAP. And but here's the thing is that Courtney is a fashionista, and so I just steer clear. Because I was like so intimidated. Because you know, you know, no, seriously, and I've told you this for a long time. Like, I'm not, like, I wear black. Like, I wear black, I keep it basic. If, I'm in question, it's leopard and stripes. Like, <laughs> that's just to like throw a certain amount of spunk, but there's no actual plan. But Heidi, you have a very distinct personal style. Stripes. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> no, but you've kind of got this um, laid back, sporty chic thing going on. All right, all right. I appreciate that she's defining it for me. That's helpful. <laughs> no, so Courtney has, I mean, it's like a, your own little fashion empire, basically. <laughs> And it's a stone throw. Her headquarters is about a stone throw from where we are actually recording right now. And it's vastly different. Hers is super chic and cool. And um, so tell our viewers and our listeners about Sense of Style. Okay, so Sense of Style, we're an online women's fashion brand. I gotta spell it for you because it's sense like a C. C E N T S, not sense like you've got good fashion sense, but sense like I remember when Dollars I Dollars and cents. Yes, yes. Because yes. it's all about affordability and accessibility in fashion. Um, I started the company 12 years ago this month. I mean, were you always like a fashion-y? Like That's, yeah, I've always loved fashion. It's been my way of expressing myself. Okay. So, you know, you, you're a crafter, you're into scrapbooking and all that. that Fashion was my way of saying who I was without okay. having to say it. Cool. And um, that was, I was a stay-at-home mom. Back in 07, we had just adopted our oldest, and I was looking for a creative outlet. Okay. Outside of motherhood. Because about the time you get that first kid, you're like, let me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. but, I mean, you just kind of need some diversity, right? I needed something where I could apply my skills outside home and motherhood, and yet I didn't want to have to sacrifice that because we had worked so hard to get that right. baby. And um, fashion seemed like an easy entry for me. And we've built, thank you for using the word empire. I'm going with what she it's said. It's true, it's um, true. Over the last 12 years. Um, and we've, we like to say that we use fashion just as a tool for women's empowerment. Because at Sense of Style, we believe that when you look good, you feel good. It's totally true. And then you, when you look bad, you feel bad. <laughs> exactly. Right? Sweats <laughs> and a messy bun feel differently than a little pop of lip and a cute top. It just, yeah. you, it's a different feel. And then when we feel good, we can go do good in the world. Yeah. When we don't feel good in our skin and who we are, all we think about is that we don't feel good. Yeah, it's so true. when we can kind of connect that looking good on the outside with the inside, then it's like, hey, I've got this. I can go live my life. And I have that, you know, there are days when, you know, that little quote that's like, put on lipstick and deal with it or something yeah. like that. Like, there's something to that, like, you know, it gives you some oomph. Right? Yeah, it makes you, you're like, okay, I, I've got this. I've got my look this. together. I can have my life together, even if it's not. Like, right. let's be right. honest. Which is okay. <laughs> it's okay. Well, so usually here at Swapped, because I am so food challenged, um, I usually ask my guests to bring something to eat, just, and also like little tips and ideas about what they eat so that I can, you know, bring that on board for my family. Cause, Food is not my strength. So this is hilarious because, <laughs> see, this is why we're soul sisters. We're, yeah, we're basically spirit animals. <laughs> that's true. Because we're busy, we're, you know, we're building companies, we're building families. I actually love to cook, but 
I don't have a lot of time to do it. So when you asked me to bring I this, something, I, I went to the store because that's how I roll. But you got to say what store you went to because it's not just any store. So I went to Harmon's, and if you're a Utah local, you know Harmon's is just like heaven on earth. It just makes you talk about feeling good. Yeah, you walk in and it's it's an experience it in really shopping. Is. You have no problem spending double the price because you're just happy being in there. <laughs> Everything just looks so beautiful. And they opened one. We don't live far from one another. They opened one like five minutes from our homes. And it's that's fantastic. It's just kind of dangerous if I'm it's being fantastic. really honest. And luckily, the parking lot is super annoying. It is. It's a deterrent. So I'll be like, oh, I want to go to Harmon's. I'll be like, mm, oh. I don't want that parking lot. And no. now that the Chick fil A is open, which I saw My son that works Colton's at, working yes. at, <laughs> which is I hilarious. was like, oh, that's parking it's lots like even going to be more of a situation. I know. It's Anyways, okay, so, so I ran to Harmon's. And if you know me, you know that I have an obsession with nacho cheese. And I totally knew that. And I didn't even expect you to bring the nacho cheese, but I'm glad you did. I, it's my happy, it's, it's just happiness in a jar. I don't eat baked goods and I don't eat a lot of sweets, but like put nacho cheese in front of me and it's just, and then of course, I love that. Chips and salsa. And this and little. And it's warm. We've got some warm nacho warm cheese. Warm nacho cheese. Because you know, you, if you're really desperate, you can eat it cold, but. That is desperate. I do have a little bit of us. I have a little bit of standards. I do warm up the nacho okay, cheese. Okay, okay. So we put it in the microwave. And then this is my favorite salsa. It's, um, so chill. I don't. I'm. I'm probably killing that name. We're but it's like a chipotle it. deliciousness. We put this on eggs in the morning. Sounds so fantastic. And good. I've never tried it. So so chill. And it's the chipotle flavor. Regulars not great. The chipotle is oh, chipotle is yeah. amazing. Um, mix right. mix the two. Insider tip. All right. Mix we're gonna up. we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. And just their chips. And the best chips, in my opinion, are the thin ones. I don't like super thick chips, and so these ones, it's a nice. So they go with it. It's like the little match, the so chill in here. Yes. Now, I just saw this. This is, I don't know, this caught my eye. Why? It says, ultimate flavor when served warm. Who knew? I've never warmed up my salsa. I haven't either. I do know it's delicious on huevos rancheros. So, or any eggs. Okay, so now we all have a new, it says, this is interesting too. <laughs> Great with chips, steaks, fish, soups, pasta, and wild game. Wild game. <laughs> well, I won't be trying that, <laughs> but I might. Yeah, I might actually warm it. I don't know. But Very interesting. All right. Anyways, it's a Texas company. Get it at Harmon's. All right. Hold, Delicious. Please hold. I'm just going to grab my um, grab a plate here. I should have been more prepared. So, Heidi, you actually have to be the one to eat this today. I know. Okay. So then. This morning, I'm, I'm, so I'm like, okay, I hope that Courtney remembers that this is today, and so we pop on to her stories. Tell us what, here, let me just get this, I'm going to move the water over for Courtney, but you can just tell us what we're doing. So I'm this not... is hilarious that I brought this food to eat, because I'm actually on a detox. I'm on a 21-day... We're uh, not sure why she's on the detox, but it's fine, it's fine. It actually makes sense when you live off of nacho cheese and gummy bears that you have to get that stuff out of your body at some point. But I'm on, um, I'm on a functional medicine detox. It's, his name is Dr. Cabral, and he's from Massachusetts, and he has a liver detox. Um, to, if you have inflammation, autoimmune stuff, it helps with it. I know, and I'm on day two, and it's an all-liquid, so right now I, uh, I can't have anything other than shakes. And, you need to know. I'm so I am, sorry about this. I am this. not healthy. This isn't like something I do often. This is the first time I've ever done a detox. And I'm just going to, you talk about detox. I'm going to eat nacho cheese. This is going to be I'd fantastic. I'd much rather be doing that. But when you consume the amount of nacho cheese I do, you, you need to get it. You need to help your body out a little. I'm going to say yes to this. I'm going to eat one more just because I don't want this part to go to waste. <laughs> and then I'll set it aside so that you don't have to be smelling. Your favorite thing while you drink water. That water. Fantastic. <laughs> so I have some autoimmune issues, and I'm hoping that this detox will help me with um, um, uh, some, some, some chronic fatigue that and some brave. other things. That is brave. That, okay, I'm just gonna, we're going to put this away. Because now she's um, uh, yeah, so there's, traumatized. There's my <laughs> tip on how to help your family buy nacho <laughs> cheese and processed food at the store. And if you've done that for a number of years, 
switch over to the water. <laughs> or if you'll notice that I am going to join you in drinking water today. And not Diet Coke. Yeah. Water, drinking water is a challenge for me. But here's the thing. Diet Coke is like 99% water. It is. So I kind of feel like I'm still drinking water even when I'm drinking Diet Coke. I'm three days <laughs> off Diet Coke. And let me tell you, I like Diet Coke. It just makes me happy. It just tastes so good. Yeah. Well, let's not talk about that. Okay. Let's not, talk let's, <laughs> let's not focus on what we can't have. <clears throat> that's right. That's right. Well, so here's the thing. Um, and it's interesting that when, when Courtney came here this morning, we started talking. And I do not put myself in the same category as you from the standpoint that you're like, a CEO, because I'm kind of more just like, I like to stay in the creative. My goal was, my entire goal is to never have to sign a check, right? And so I don't thrive on running the business. I thrive in this in creative, creative realm. And so, you know, I know that you, like Sense of Style is really something that you built. It's been your baby for 12 years, along with your babies, right? Mm -hmm. So. You have? I have three children. Three so my oldest is 13, Bella. Okay. Um, my two oldest are adopted. So Bella's 13 and she's Latina and super um, spunky. She also has um, some learning disabilities and things okay. and some developmental delays. And so um, she's just, um, she's really hard, but she's also such a gift to just me. She's so full. Yeah. She's such a gift to me. And then I have my 10 year old Chase, who's also adopted, and he's African American. And he's my sweetheart. He is like my soul um, child. And then, as life would have it, I uh, had a, um, a third uh, biologically. Yeah. Uh, Boom, got pregnant. <laughs> Uh, so for me, it wasn't getting pregnant, it was staying. Ryder was okay. my sixth pregnancy, only live birth. Oh, wow. So, um, and that is, yeah. It's own story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so how old is he? He's seven. And seven. he is his dad, like twin, twinning with his dad, just this inquisitive mind always on the go. And uh, yeah, we have a beautiful life. Oh, and that's, <clears throat> I love that so much. Um, one of the things that I've noticed about you, so I follow Courtney. I mean, we're real life friends. I would consider us real life friends. We are real life friends. And can I just say, I'm gonna make you own something. You yourself have created an empire. And we are real life friends. And you are, Heidi has been a mentor to me for years. Years oh. and years, before we were ever even real life friends, you were someone I looked to that did things with so much grace and dignity and fun. And um, so well, I just have you. to give that plug so that you'll own that. a little bit of who, <laughs> what you, who you are and what you've created. Well, I guess it's, a t yeah, it's different. It, <laughs> but, it, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the thing that was interesting about us talking about Courtney, um, in, and when I say that we're real life friends, like I've picked stuff up from your house. I know where she lives. Um, and we, ha we cross paths a lot um, professionally. But what's interesting is that, like, we've also had some late night texting mm -hmm. and some talking about things that are hard. Um, usually not businessy. The, the real stuff, like. Yeah, we don't talk business very us. often. <laughs> it comes up now and then, but it's really easy for us to just get into hey, what's really going on? Right. And how are you honestly doing? Right. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, I think that. What I, I noticed that you on a little bit of a journey, you've been sharing a little bit of a personal journey on your social media, which I'm sure is kind of hard. Yeah, so <clears throat> I have been. <laughs> and I have never really used my personal social media for that, but in the last six months, nine months, I've decided that I would. Um, outside of Sense of Style, I'd use my personal social media to t um, be a little bit more honest and share some of what's going on in my life. What I loved about that, and you know, you've talked about meditation, mm -hmm. and you've talked about taking a break. Like, I have to just say that it was a few months ago. When was it that you're like, I'm out, I'm going to London alone? Was it, it September? Was on September 30th, I was driving with John back from my mom's in Idaho. And out of nowhere, it was divinely inspired for sure. I turned to him and I said, what if I didn't come into the office tomorrow and I went on a trip instead? 
And that day I, I bought a plane ticket to London and went By off. By herself? Yeah, I, I needed it. Though. How long were you gone? Eight days. And I followed, like you didn't post a ton, but I remember, and I sent you a message and I was just like, I just want you to know that yay. <laughs> yay for you. <laughs> and also yay for your husband for being like, you know what, yeah, go. I was at a kind of a transition point. Um, you know, when you've spent so long building something and put your whole self into it, quite literally. You know, yeah. when you're an entrepreneur, you, have to, you yeah. have to, you know, you have to put all that you are. And it's not a 40 hour a week gig. Your mind never stops. I know your mind's never stopping. Right. It's, it's on all the responsibilities, all the roles you're playing. It's, it's mom and wife and um, creator and storyteller and mental health advocate. You're, it's all of those things all the time. Right. And what happens when you need a change? You need a pivot and you've created something that you quite literally feel bound by. Right. That's where I was last fall. And I knew that it was up to me to make the change. No one else was gonna make it for me. If I wanted change, I had to be the one to be brave enough and courageous. Well, and courageous I, enough to I know make the that, change. what, okay, I was trying to remember it. Wait, if you go into Courtney's um, business, there's this big words, up, you gotta say them, the bold, oh, like. Bold and full. It's my, it's sense of style's why, and it's my why to live a bold and full life. Yeah, and I think that you owning that, to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not okay right now, I think that it was bold and full for you to take that chance, and, to, and then to put it out there. Because then you got people concerned like me. <laughs> are, you, well, are you really, you know? We had people asking if we were getting a divorce, and quite right, literally. Right. And, um, and I did take a step back last fall from my company. I asked John to step in as interim president, my husband, who is our COO. And last fall, I um, stayed home. And I thought, and I prayed, and I wrote, and I decided that I needed to get out of the day to day of running my company so that I could pursue other. Uh, yearnings, other heart yeah. calls. Well, you've, I mean, through all that, I felt even more connected to you. So I want you to know how much I appreciated you sharing that with me. Um, and, you know, something, so, so as we have kind of these late night texts, or, or some of these, like, Courtney's come in clutch for me several times, and I'm like, I need, I need 12 t-shirts right now. And she's <laughs> like, okay, come over, meet me at the warehouse, and, you know, whatever. Courtney will do anything for anybody. I shouldn't tell people that because maybe they'll exploit that. No, don't call her. Just kidding. It's just for me. No. <laughs> um, when I texted Courtney, I said, I want you to come on um, and do this little show with me. I knew that Courtney's not a crafter, but very much um, a, like love stories. I know how important stories are to you and um, telling stories. And so something interesting kind of happened. I felt compelled to call her and immediately when she texted back she's like she didn't know exactly what it was. She just said okay which this is what I sort of exploited her because I knew she would. Um, and immediately a project popped into my head and, um, and I knew it would be like right when I saw it in my head I was like okay this is this is supposed to this is supposed to happen. And so I created a sample of it and, and I want to show you kind of what I created and for some reason I could see your little guy Chase in my head and I was like oh okay this is for Chase and um, so I have a son about the same age my son is 11 and um, this is a paper collection and um, Courtney and I have connected a lot about um, mental health issues and um, particularly the the situation with my son that has happened and it's it's been about three and a half years a little over and this is kind of the first time that I have created a product line that was um, about him or uh, inspired by him and dedicated to him so Corey loved wolves and outdoors and um, it took me a minute to kind of come up with something that I could honor his yeah. story with and so in creating Wolfpack, um, I created kind of my first boy, not, not my first, but it's been a while since I created a boy line. 
So um, I thought that I would make something for Connor that would then, we would translate it into for Chase as well. Awesome. So just this little book, I'm calling it 10 Stories. Um, obviously everybody has more than 10 stories. Um, but I brought this out and I showed it to Connor and he just consumed it. He loved it so much. So in here is 10 little stories that are, and, and actually the first one um, I haven't added. So this is a picture of Connor motorcycling. This is the current obsession. <laughs> um, so this is going to go right here in the front and I'm going to talk about it. But just kind of, and, and this is a terrible quality photo, but but look at it. This photo is everything. Yeah. Um, and at the beach, every time they did this, a beach stack. And um, so it's all of them on their shoulders. And um, this was the last full beach stack. Um, and so I wrote about that in here. So this is a little book is made out of envelopes. Now let's see, I can't do it upside down. So in each pocket is another photo with oh. a story on the back. And I think when people talk about stories, they kind of worry that they have to be long and like five pages, double spaced or whatever. Stories are short, can be short. They're just little snippets into these memories. And so here I talk about where this skateboard came from. Um, he got it right before we went on this trip and his big brothers went and got it for him. And so that was kind of a big deal. Um, the big brothers way into rugby and so this is them refereeing the little five and six year old games. <laughs> um, and I have this photo in here from, from Connor's very first season of rugby, which I mean, it's I mean, just it's stinking cute. so sweet. <laughs> so to, to go through all of these, um, you know, Connor remembered these and he connected with them and they're all very different and t treasured. Um, and so I said to Courtney, okay, I want you to send me um, some photos that have some stories attached. So really, kind of quickly, um, maybe as you peek through these. So I, I got the photos printed. Uh, and can I tell you, we did this um, just the other night as a family. John and I sat down, okay, got okay. into Google Photos, and it turned into hours of us going through our family photos and telling the stories and watching the videos and so thank you that like I'm gonna get emotional because it was meaningful something it, amazing happens right and um, the kids would say well show me when I was two or show me when I was four and we would go through and find those photos and how much did they just love hearing about themselves they loved it because they we all as humans are looking for to be seen to be heard to feel validated to feel important and um, showing, showing the photos, showing the connection does that in, a, in, in just one small way. Yeah, and, it, and it's amazing how the photo brings back all the emotions and it brings back the story. Like it's this instant reminder yes. of, what had ha of what had happened. It's that token of the experience, yeah. right? Um, so, oh, oh my word, it just kills me. He was uh, four pounds. We, um, I was lucky enough to be in the room when he was born, and I call him my four-pound hero. Oh man! Because he was the tiniest. The look stuff. at him! Look at how it big the binky so is in his mouth, and look at his. That's John's hand next to his. I mean, quite literally, he was so so tiny, tiny. so tiny. Um, and um, Chase is a gymnast, right? <laughs> He's I, on the gymnastics team. This photo. Yeah. Amazing. And so I love it. Um, these were his first professionals done of, for the team. And uh, I just, they make me so happy. Also, he's so buff. Oh, and the strength, <laughs> just the strength in him. Yeah. Um, his birth parents came from um, Indianapolis two summers ago, and they'd never seen the mountains. So we took him up to the mountains. And, and so did you have an open adoption? Uh, we have a fairly open adoption. He asked two springs ago, he said, I'd like to see them. And so we said, well, let's make that happen. Wow. Um, I'm of the belief that you can never have too much love in your life. No, of course. And these are beautiful, beautiful people who love him. And um, so he has two sets of parents that will do anything in the world wow. for him. Very cool. Um, 
I love this picture. This was in the Virgin Islands last, um, last winter. We went on a Disney cruise. And um, when I say, we share a middle name, his, or excuse me, we share a name. So this is a piece of Chase's story, but um, I feel comfortable sharing it. His birth father's name is Courtney Brown. Really? And it gets me emotional. You couldn't have set that up in a million years. Wow. That's <laughs> my little piece of divine, uh, my miracle. He was meant How to be in our home. How is that even possible? How is that even possible? <laughs> so Chase's name is Chase Courtney Brown in honor of, um, so we share a name. Wow. And we share a heart. That's amazing. <laughs> he is, um, my connection with Chase is so deep and so strong. Um, when I was, when we were looking to adopt again, the only emotion I could, I felt this urgency that I had to find him. Like it was my job and my only job on earth was to go and find this baby that was meant to be in my home. Wow. And that when he was born, it was like, there you are. And oh then we found gosh. out that, that synchronicity, that connection, and it was like, of course, God led you here. <laughs> that is a crazy, I've never heard th that's, an amazing, amazing so. piece of history. Well, when I looked at these photos, um, this kid's smile. His smile is amazing. Will light up amazing. any room, right? Oh, man. Um, well, I loved, I love these, these um, photos. So I want to show you really quickly, I'm going to show you how I made this little book. Because it's kind of unique. And I like things that are just really simple and that you can even do with stuff that you just have around. So this is a book made out of envelopes. How fun. So you just glue the envelope flap mm -hmm. to the next envelope and it makes a page. So this is the beginning and then in here the each envelope becomes where you tuck that story. I think that even though when you look at a photo you see this the story kind of starts to ooze out, but there's so much value in actually writing. Yes, that because story. you know, we think we have all the time in the world, oh, but yeah. and we think the memories will stay and will always. But if we can write them down, and like you said, they can be simple. I think we get hard on ourselves when we think they have to be long. Totally. Um, I don't know if you've read Essentialism by um, Greg McKeown, but it's a fantastic book. Highly recommend you it. I read Get a through lot. a lot of books, girl. And by read, I mean listen too. Right. Let me plug Audible for a minute. For sure. But he says that when he started journaling, he made himself. He he said that what he did was I I could only write one thing. I could only write one thing because if I thought I had to write my whole day, I would stop. Right. And I thought that was the best advice. And you just gave that same advice in writing the story. Write one thing. Right. And and it Make can it just be a little morsel. Mm -hmm. You know, just a little. A little bit and that's what's so great about this is is so many people say to me how do I get started we have a million photos and a million memories how do I get started choose one choose ten mm -hmm. you know and and even just one little thing is better than nothing you, you know and, and add to that well after I showed this to Connor he's like I want ten more of these books I want a hundred stories and I was like okay no worries <laughs> All right, I'm just going to show you really okay. quickly how I put it together. So I glue on the flap, and then I just put the envelope right on top of it, and I stack it up. And I only did 10. This is just a little tape runner. And um, I, like I said, I just stack it up. It's important to kind of try to keep it lining up along the edges. And there, that's, that's how it builds. So it, the other thing that's important is to kind of make sure that the glue gets as close to the edge as you can because the back side where they're all being glued is like the binding of the book or the hinging. All right, so this Brilliant. is kind of just shows you how it comes together. I can't believe I'd never thought of it before, actually. It was like... It's so brilliant. Why have I never thought of this? This was a good one. So. Then when I got them all together, I took some glossy accents, and this is just kind of a fast glide. It's my, it's my favorite glue, you know. And I kind of rubbed it just into the creases so that my little binding would be nice and secure. 
Especially because these are boys. Already Connor was, I was like, so easy, Con, be careful. Like he's ripping the photos in and out. And I'm like, can you have some respect for my efforts? You know? Um, so you have to, you know, kind of keep in mind the fact that the, that the boys are, the boys are going to be boars. So um, then, like you can see here, and this is just kind of so you can see the bones of it. Um, chipboard is is all we're using, and then I use the six by six wolf pack paper pad um, because I liked how the designs were scaled down perfectly for this. So, you know, what I one thing that I noticed about you guys a lot of traveling. We like to travel. We love that. How we connect. And I think that when you get people out of their comfort zone, you know, that's kind of where things sort of open up a little bit. So, um, put the paper on there, just using the adhesive as well. And I'm gonna just, let's see, I'm gonna put this together, oh, I did what I tell people not to do. Always put the adhesive on the paper and not the chipboard. Because when you do that, it kind of like pulls up those mm. fibers of the chipboard. And um, so I'm just getting the adhesive close to the edge. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and just stick this. Oh, let's make sure it's right side up. Da -da -da. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we, is, we can't talk, we can't talk and talk and craft sometimes. You gotta, sometimes you gotta think, right? I'm just watching. <laughs> I'm learning from a master. <laughs> All right, so now we this now becomes like our inside pocket page. And then on the back, we have to just get a little bit more fancy. So the back, I use this moon phase paper. And let's see. So I've already got this going. So I put the moons on the back. And then I'm actually going to glue the flap in and then sandwich another paper on top. over it. Okay. So that will keep it all together. Da, 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 da. And I pre-cut these all just because um, it's easier than trying to talk and talk and cut. All right, so this is kind of the basic and now I'm gonna sandwich another paper over that. I've got this ready to go. Da, da, da. And we'll stick this on. This making the inside cover. All right. So, ready got to a go. Book. Okay, so now we have a little book, and then the last step of creating the little book is this little sp is a little spine, and um, which is so cute and finishes it off so nice. I know it's really quick and easy. So the the way that I do this is I'm going to go ahead and glue on just about an inch of the paper and I just kind of line it up. Then I kind of use, I'm always a cheater. Let's see, not totally straight. Da, 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 da. I'm always kind of a little bit of a cheater. Wherever I can like cheat the system, I do. So that gives me my little crease. I'm gonna go there. And then we want it to wrap around and I'm gonna want another crease. And so I kind of like I cheat again. This will be about a half an inch. Our little spine is about a half an inch. And then, I'm gonna bend it back. Sorry, bend it back there so you can see it. So now I have this little spine. We don't wanna glue inside where this spine is. Okay. Um, we're just going to. So that allows for the book, the pages to, move. to turn. And yeah. to move. All right, so now, okay. Now we can get to the fun part of adding some photos in here. And these pages kind of lay nice and flat and are allowed. So what I did was put the photo on one side that kind of covers up where that flap is and then the other photo will tuck inside. Okay. So do you want to pick one for the, f for the very front? Here. So do you like to go chronologically or? Oh, this is, this is the ultimate question, you know. I'm never chronological because that's way too organized. <laughs> but that might, but it might make sense for Chase. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
let's go chronological because okay. I like things a little bit okay. in, in order. So. So when you sent me when you sent me the photos, I did know that I wanted oh. him going. You wanted him this more, way, right? So, so this one we could put that in. That can go number one, right there, and then we can choose one of these to put. Or so what I yeah. So I tucked, I put some paper on the back of the photo, so that I could already inspire you, <laughs> let you know that you needed to do that, some writing that I needed to write. <laughs> okay, and then full disclosure. Friends at home. I forgot my paper trimmer. Is that like a cardinal sin? Yes. Okay. Just needed to check. It just, it just was really a problem because I knew that I was going to have to trim down these photos so that they would fit exactly. Yeah. That looks great. So now, I mean, now I'm scaring everybody thinking, everybody's going to think that they have to use like this. You don't. You need a paper trimmer. So this, this will remind you to get your paper trimmer so you don't have to use like this carpet knife. Okay. But I do actually really like a good solid carpet knife for things. No. All right, I'm going to let you do this. Okay. You, you've got this. So you're going to just glue this right in. She did it. I she did it. She scrapbooked, you guys. She crafted. This is a big deal. And we, have it, we have it on film. And wait, there's proof. This is, this is, anything can happen. Oh, look how sweet. He's so tiny. Isn't that cute? And he is going to love that. He's going to love it so much. OK, so now just tuck one of those little photos inside. I think that it should with fit the, OK. With there the binky go. photo? Yes. All right, I had to trim that down a little bit, too. Perfect. So all right, now number two. Look how cute. OK, number two. Um, so I'm, now I'm trying to remember all the, I think we need to do one about his smile. Oh, yeah. So this is, we love to adventure and be outside. And um, Chase has asthma. And so we had done this hike up into the mountains in Utah. And he started having an asthma attack. And so he asked for a ride down the hill on dad's smart, back. Smart. So it's like it, it looks like it's some kind of a little baby carrier. It is a baby carrier. <laughs> and he was having an asthma attack. And yet still look at the grin on that kid's face. Oh, every so, one of these photos, this kid's smile is yeah. amazing. So we'll All do right, that. I'm going to trim, trim that with my very um, high tech. This is what they had to do back in the day before we had paper trimmers. Seriously, look at that smile. Fantastic. I know I'm biased. So how He's old, my child. How old is he in that picture? This one right here, he is four. It's his fourth oh, birthday. Oh my gosh. Oh, shoot, I just took your joy by gluing it in. You Sorry. just took my joy. <laughs> take my joy. It just makes me so happy. Let's get these in. Let's get these in. All but right. So is this one going to tuck inside? Yeah. And I'm going to okay. write about just his smile. And I like the idea that I don't, you don't have to write just about events, right? Right. I think that what's good is to tell people what you love about them. You know, and one of the things that we kind of talk about is that as a mom, all of our conversations are like, pick up your shoes, do your homework, eat your, finish your dinner, go take a shower. It's, we don't very often tell people what we love about them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come up in conversation. And so I think that when it's written down, it's like, oh, this is truth. This is truth about me, you know? And it can't be disputed mm -hmm. because it's proof, right? You know? And so when, when this is evolves and it keeps forming um, or time goes, and they get a little bit older and start wondering, like, where did I come from? You know, or wondering if they matter, wondering if they belong. You know, especially this, this adoption mm -hmm. element adds to that question, those questions. It does. Know? It does. And um, we all want to know we belong. Oh, for sure. And that we're connected. We were talking about connection before and how vital it is to feel connected to others, but really ultimately to feel connected to self. Because if you don't connect with yourself, you, you know, I remember that when my mom, when I was young, it was like the self-esteem talk at church or wherever, and it's like, you love yourself first or you can't love anybody else. And I didn't really understand that because I didn't have a lot of self, I struggled with self-love. 
but I loved others, no problem. I think the difference is what you just said. You have to connect with yourself. And that means that you accept all this stuff. And that will allow you to then connect with others. Yeah. And so I think that having a little, this book of stories that's like, oh, yeah, I, I was little when I was born. And they love me anyway. You know, or, or whatever the challenges are, whatever the, those things you perceive yourself that might inhibit you from belonging, you know, and they love me anyway. Yeah. And that, and that maybe if we can see it in a photo or in a story that our mom has written or dad has written about us, maybe it can be the opening for us to see it in ourselves. Because sometimes I do think we have to hear it from others first. Yeah before we believe it in Because it, that's that truth, that mm -hmm. truth. Well, we're gonna keep on putting stories in, but I want to make sure that we kind of talk, and especially because you just told me about his name. So, Chase Courtney Brown. Um, I put Cor uh, Connor's initials on here, and Connor really loves his initials because they're the same as his older brother, Corey. So, C Corey Paul Swap and Connor Price Swap. And um, so he really loves his initials. And so I, um, right here, yeah. I have this alphabet. And um, we'll just put these on, on the cover. I don't know if there's a different one that you like. I chose this one that says, to live will always, to live will be an awfully big adventure, which oh, probably wow. fits great for it does. Chase as well. But do you know what? I'm going to choose for Chase, Forge Your Own tour Trail. Okay. Because he is his own kind of beautiful and wonderful. And I, the, that's what I love about him the most is this kid loves <laughs> My Little Ponies and has since he was like two or three, and he owns it. He's been a mile, not this year, he was Dracula this last year for Halloween, but for like four years in a row, he was, a My Little, he was one of the My Little Ponies. I have to say that this morning, well, I guess it was last night when I was cropping your photos and prepping them to, fo to print, um, my son comes in and he's like, is that a My Little Pony shirt? It was, it was yes. in one of these other photos. Oh, And he's like, so cute, it's so cute. And he just, like he saw that immediately. He saw that he was holding that My Little Pony and Connor connected to it immediately. You know? Yeah, they're called bronies, boys who like ponies. It's I a like thing. It. <laughs> but do you know, I was, um, I, I do. I, I consume audio like no one's business. And I was listening to a Super Soul, an Oprah Super Soul um, conversation with Julia Roberts. Okay. And she said, what, what are you most proud of as a parent? And it, it made me stop and think of, what am I most proud of? I am so proud that I have children that own who they are. And that they're totally cool rocking the pony shirt. I think that's awesome. And, you know, and... My daughter, my 13-year-old, she wears many braids in her hair every day because she loves it. And that that's just who they are and they own that. And like, if I can instill that self-confidence and self-love in them, then I'm doing an okay job as a mom. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I think that if that gets reinforced um, through stories that you tell and through photos that yeah. they see, then, then they feel like, okay, and, and, I get, and I'm loved. Not anyway. I'm I'm just I'm loved, loved like I am. Just because I'm me, you know. So and that being me is enough. Whoever I am, whatever I choose, whatever gets me excited and lights me up in this world, whether it's My Little Ponies and gymnastics, or motorcycles and skateboards. Yeah. Okay. So I also just love this photo oh, of your two boys together. And this is from Christmas Eve this year. We decided to spend Christmas in Hawaii this year. I think that is brilliant. We didn't do presents or anything really, and this is on a rainy Christmas Eve in um, uh, Hanalei, Hawaii on Kauai. So cute. And I took this photo, and I just... Do you ever have those moments when you're just so grateful your kids have each other? Oh, yeah. Um, this is Chase and Ryder, and Ryder is three years younger than Chase, but it's, they're like best friends. They are. They are best friends, and they are always there for each other, which is really nice because my oldest struggles a lot, and she has a lot of mental health issues, um, which we've talked about. 
And um, for them to have one another and kind of be like, hey, Chase, hey, Ryder, let's go, let's go <laughs> head outside together. You know, Bella, Bella needs her space. And it's like they have this greater understanding of love and empathy. Oh, and yeah. I took this photo and it just, I was so, it was just one of those moments that I was like, man, how lucky are we that they have one another? Well, and did they just, I mean, I'm sure that when he was a when Ryder was a baby, Chase was just like all over that. Oh yeah, because <laughs> he was just this chunky little ball of squish. So oh, I love that. Yeah. All right. What's next? What's our other? What's the next story? Well, I think we have to talk about Chase's love of ponies, of My yes. Little Pony. Yes. Let's make sure this gets so, in there. So. Chase has his own unique style, and he has loved My Little Pony since he was like two or three. And um, he's what we call this a brony, the, the a cute, boy who likes cutest, ponies. Cutest. And he still sleeps with uh, what he calls Rainbow, which is Rainbow Dash. Is he going to be so sad that I'm telling this on <laughs> film? No, he's not, because this is his Rainbow Dash. <laughs> and he sleeps with Rainbow still. And. Um, my, for one Christmas when he was little, my brother made him this shirt because they couldn't find any shirts oh, for really? boys that, um. Look at the smile too, I like know, did he, he was so proud and he wore it for so long because there weren't any boy pony shirts. There was only girl pony shirts. So we oh, had to, my we gosh. had to get I him love that a pony so shirt. Much. That same Christmas we got John one that said, um, brony on it so that they had twinning. <laughs> Twinning shirts. All right, we're gonna stick this in. So this, you gotta write that down. You gotta write down. I mean, he probably has never forgotten that, and will never forget that. But I will though. That's gotta get written down. All right. So, what else? Well, let's. Um, I don't. There are all so many. There's so many I know. stories. And this is. That's what I ran into. Like, and we can make more books. Okay. We can scrapbook can, more stories. We can. I can get you a big scrapbook. <laughs> I know where to find them. Um. He loves the water. His happy place is in the sand and the surf. I love this photo too. Isn't this amazing? It's a great photo. Of him doing handstands and cartwheels on the beach. And so that's just a reminder of his love of the water. And he's, um, you know when you see your kids at peace? Oh yeah. When they're just and you know. at peace. For Chase, it's when he's at the, at the seashore. Is this one going here or tucking inside? I think we'll put that there and then we'll tuck him just with that. That's such that's, a great photo That too. smile again. Yeah. Um, so beach is your family's kind of thing. It, it, we love the beach. It's, it's because we're from Utah. I love the mountains and we're too. Like, get us out of here. We love the mountains too, but if we can get to the beach, we'll do it. In fact, my husband just bought, not just a few months ago, a sprinter van. Have oh, you seen these yes. things? Are you going to deck it out? He's decked. He started. He took it on its inaugural run with a friend this weekend, so he could make sure the family would be okay in it, oh, so that, that we can take the Sprinter, be all in one place, and go on weekend adventures. It's we love to be out and being on the road, being in the mountains or by the beach is where we connect as a family. Well, and I think that that was really like fundamentally when when I came up with the Wolf Pack, and it's got mountains and it's got trees and it's got moons and it's got stars I just wanted that like that is where the connection happens it doesn't happen where there's homework that needs to be done and bathrooms that need to be cleaned and it I mean that's a different kind of connection right and yeah. a good connection but being out that's where the memories are made it's like um, it, I think I like to think about it as space you create the space from the everyday so you have room, whether it's in your mind or in time or in distance from your everyday habitual life. And then it's like the memories can creep in. Yeah. Because when we're doing the everyday and we're such habitual beings, it's really hard to get the memories it is. in. It is. So we have to stop. Especially for me, I'm like, this, this, I'm a checklist, you know, yeah. we gotta get all these things done. We don't have time to just sit around. You're an achiever. Yeah. Well, wow. I know nothing about that. I'm not yeah. that way at all. I know. It's <laughs> <laughs> sit down. When was the last time I sat down? But when we get to go into the mountains or, you know, or wherever and just create that little bit of space, all of a sudden we're like, ah. Oh. You know, there's something else that I want to kind of bring up. And this photo kind of, and actually these two kind of photos made me think of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about girl power. And there's a lot of talk about like who runs the world, girls. And you and I were kind of like, yeah, girls run the world. Like 
we're kind of doing we're doing our part, right? I mean, where do you go with the boy thing? Like, I kind of feel like the boys are sort of like, wait, I they're, see they're kind of they're kind of getting. We we got to remind the boys that, that they matter. To Absolutely. <laughs> to and you. okay, so uh, I'm gonna bring up another book. Okay. It's called The Mask of Masculinity by Lewis House. And Mask of Masculinity by Lewis House. Okay. I'm not a huge Lewis House fan, but this book was profound. Okay. Um, and it was about the masks, just like women wear masks, to f men wear masks too. The Joker mask, the, uh, the athlete mask. Right. The macho. Uh, macho mask. And we wear these masks to protect ourselves from being seen, from being vulnerable, mm -hmm. from opening up to being like, um, this is just me. But I don't think it's too different. I don't, well, it, like in most things, we're more alike than we are different. How we treat our boys versus how we treat, let them be them. Yep. Let them own who they are. And have their feelings. And, ha and they get to have their feelings. That's what I think is, you know, boys get to have their feelings too. They, they get to cry. They get to be excited. They get, they get to have that whole range of emotion. And we as their mothers and their fathers get to encourage that. Yeah. We get to encourage that it's okay to have those feelings. They don't have to be blocked or pushed down. And I, and I think that as you, as you, you said something earlier, you just wanted to fan the flame of, of who he is. You just want to make him grow and bloom there and in that um, and, and just be his biggest cheerleader. Yeah, I don't want to change them. I don't want it. My job as, as his mother is not to mold him into being something. It's to cultivate who he already is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know. Teach <laughs> him to own his story. Yes, and own who he is, his story. And he has a beautiful story. He has a unique story. Yeah. We all do. We all do. We yeah. all have stories that matter. That is one of my favorite Heidi Swap quotes <laughs> that I have written down at home is that, you know, your who you are matters, your story matters. Your story matters. matters. And I think that the, w as we connect and we honor our story, and, and it, doesn't happen, it doesn't happen naturally. It doesn't happen by itself. Like we have to look at our story. We have to look at our photos. And one of the things you said earlier about another book that you read was that Every, every piece of our story is a stepping stone and not a stumbling block. Yep. And you're going to have to tell where that book came from because <laughs> I don't remember. I do read a lot. I'm going to own that. I read a lot. Um, it's Raymond Hollywell working with the law. And it's like almost 100 years old. And he says, make it a, make, make it a stepping stone and not a stumbling block, which I just love. And when you... You said that earlier, and I was looking at this, and I'm looking at this little, was he a premature baby? He wasn't. He wasn't thriving in utero. Okay. So, teeny tiny baby. Um, you know, birth parents, Disneyland, gymnastics, you know, whatever this is, as he knows these pieces, and that helps him on it. It helps give him permission to be him. Yeah. It's kind of like um, when we understand where we've come from, and what's built us to this point, it gives us confidence in who we get to become. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know Chase is gonna love this. I'm so excited. I showed this to Connor, and he, um, this little book that will now match Chase's, um, and he just loved it. And I tried taking it down to his room, and I was like, well, no, I, 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 still, <laughs> I still need that. And um, like I said earlier, he was like, I want 10 more. 10 more, <laughs> which is adorable. Um, because they need to know their story. They need to know their story, that their story matters, and they matter. And, and the truth of the matter is they can't always tell their own story. It, it's kind of that mom job. It's, to help it's our privilege yes. to get to start them yes. on that journey of learning and telling their own story. Courtney, thank you for bringing me nacho cheese, even when you're on a liquid diet. <laughs> thank you for letting me be me and bring you nacho cheese instead of some fabulous homemade
something. There is no shame in having chips and salsa for an entire meal. I've done it many a time. Yes, I have too. I have too. <laughs> and I love you, and I'm thankful that you would come and share. I'm thankful for your example that you are to me. Um, and what an amazing story. I'm really thankful that you let me share it here. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Anything for Heidi Swap. <laughs> All right, you guys, until next time.